the ballad of Chamber Street. Now in the east the gleaming wheel, O Phobius car, is turning. Up in a suite on Chamber Street the gas is dimly burning, and from that floor there comes a roar that startles every neighbor. Oh, it says, go out, go out, Big Rosie is in labor. For twenty years this flame of love had kept herself quite busy, dispensing screws to lustful use to Abe and Ike and Izzy. The male West End called her their friend, with scalped and eager penis. They climbed aboard the naft explored this much frequented Venus. But as the pitcher at the well was fractured in the fable, after the horse was pinched, of course, they fastened up the stable. For fancy teas and soft boogies and loyal applications had ne'er returned what she most yearned, that absent menstruation. For high above uh, the pelvic brim, placed in soft depression, the unknown probe or sound reposed her indiscretion. The rascal grew and wiggled till the word was passed around. Some sprightly knight had caused by night rose with her breeches down. O oh, bards may sing of Dido's polite desert on the shore. And he is gay off down the bay, had stolen her angora. A heroine did not repose, although she often wondered. She could not think what festive dink had scored than even hundred. Now full ten times the pallid moon had risen in the heavens and did disclose to pregnant Rose herself at sixes and sevens. A rough uproar starts in her breast and centers in her belly. She sets and quakes and water makes and shakes like quava jelly. To rescue damsels was the want of valiant knights of old. So Jojo Pratt put on his hat and came when he was told on OPD in 1903 with positions so perfect he'd make her nap, he'd cure her clap or treat her for specific. But ever he left his residence he scoured the leaves of copper to make him sure not but manure, came down a lady's pooper. For Hunter John had nothing on this sovereign main physician, the type and print of Austin Flint, a damn poor obstetrician. Great William Ozellar through his brain there came a beam of light. She must be seen by Charlie Green. He jumped up in delight. By Charlie Green she must be seen to banish her despair. With his little round hat and his walking stick and his beard of pubic hair. High in a room on Chamber Street, ere yet the waters broke. From pregnant Rose they took the clothes and ne'er a word they spoke. They laid her head on the bed, her legs they had to bend them. With sterile hands they made demands to open her pudendum. Intro quietus admits my fist without the slightest erection. There I ween, said Dr. Green, that Ross is not a virgin. And I would dare almost declare that she has had coition, which in the main would best explain her present sad condition. 
Now all through that summer's day, they grappled for a fetus. With hooks and hands and tugs and hands, said Joe, this sure does beat us. Now would the goods with traction rods, though risking many stitches, call into view this goddamn who, the prince of sons of bitches. Then as the shades of evening fell, and night came on at last, they did conspire to prune and fire, to counter a mire and blast. High in the sluice they laid their fuse, with no one to detect them. They bought a pound of dynamite and stuffed it in her rectum. Proud Etna in her gala days upon the foreign shores did not interrupt the much more abrupt than did this Jewish whore. She then defiled with mangled child the waters of the bay. The bowlers they struck at Cambridge Ridgeport then landed there to stay. His balls they struck in Bridgeport. Twas there they came to earth. At Boston Light, all right, all right, they got the afterbirth. The state house dome of dirty chrome was stained with fetal faces. They said, God damn if Rockingham as they picked up the pieces. From many a little village spire has waned the peaceful day. The curfews told the passing knell, remarked upon by grey. The lowly kine in hardy tine pass slowly o'er the lee. The jumping horse is cropping gorse, whatever that may be. Tis silent now in chamber street. The crowds have homeward turned, with reverend heads they bore the dead out of the house that burned, and Dr. Gurdine has not been seen, and as for Dr. Pratt, I do not know nor give a damn where he is really at. Uh, Harvard Medical School, Anonymous.